Oh, Beth, that was we incredible. just spent wow. an hour and a half with um, His Serene Highness, uh, Prince mm. Alexei Lubomirsky, who is beyond princely. He's a prince of the cosmos, I'd say. I felt like he just oh so much to the table. What'd you get from all that? He's so princely, but not in a in a self satisfied way. You know, he's just he's very down to earth, but. He's gentlemanly, he's considerate of others. I mean, his stories about how he sort of made these intentional choices to care for his wife, and one of his best kinds of creative outlet is to spend time with his kids. You know, it shows where his values are, you know. Can we just um, that whole story about reverse engineering life from your deathbed because of his experience wow. with his stepfather, who apparently yeah. was such a good influence on him and helping him put those priorities in order. I think particularly as a child, when you lose somebody, like you said in the podcast, it does kind of warp your perception of reality. You're like, wait, is mm -hmm. this all there is? Clearly someone just went somewhere and we call yeah. it the veil. You keep saying the veil for the listeners. The veil is like, you know, the separation between physical and spiritual realm, mm -hmm. that place we can't usually peer without our five senses being more extended in some way you didn't i don't know if you knew that when you and alexi first you know forged your friendship if you were aware that he had this loss or not but yes. i think somehow the two of you you know were connected by that you know that you had experienced the same thing so that it gives you a different unique perspective on life that most yeah. people don't you know, for better or worse, don't experience. So Yeah, you know, yeah. I think it was a bit of, to give you the background and for the listeners as well, because we didn't bring this up in the podcast and I yeah, think Alexi would be okay sharing this experience, but we ended up on a, a campaign shoot um, in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, in this beautiful Rocky Mountain setting. And there was a blizzard. So we got shut down, production got shut down for, I think, two days. Mm -hmm. We didn't really have much to do, but kind of hang out with each other. And and then, you know, we decided one night to go out and explore uh, and get, let let out the, you know, yeah. the, the getting out and dancing a bit. And a little singing. bit of cabin fever. Oh, yeah. Cabin. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Get out of that cabin fever. And I don't know. I somehow I sat next to Alexi at the dinner table. We immediately connected. Um, I was surprised to find out later that he actually had recognized, you know, I guess how sensitive and mm -hmm. um, I was not really believing all this modeling BS, you know, or the, and having any ego mm -hmm. about my beauty or anything. I think he sensed that about me, even though I had to project that on set and be that on set. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever forces brought us together, we just really connected. I remember that whole night, like so well, it's always in my memory of, of going out and having fun. And I just, for some reason, I was really just connected to his side. I wanted to be near him. And there was something about him that I felt very connected to. But that's the thing is like, he could sense from you. I mean, really kindred spirits. He could sense from you that you were willing to go deeper than just the surface level chit chat. And he wasn't interested in that anyway. Like, you know, he expressed that that's something he's not great at just discussing the weather and, you know, the social goings on he prefers to go deeper you know so i'm sure yeah. the both of you did at that point and um that's really great i i empathize with that i don't love the nonsense the chit chat the i mean as long as we're together let's have a conversation about something real you know let's take the leap and be a little bit vulnerable and a little more authentic and see where it goes i mean my my favorite thing is when he told us his vulnerable moment with his his stepdad that was my favorite moment. But I think um, his advice at the very end about what to do to create a really great community, you can't, well, I suppose you, maybe you could, but I don't think you can create a very effective community without trust. And he brought that up like right from the get-go. You know, you have to start by building on trust. And, and what does that, ex what, what do he say secondly, which was so cool? Because how do you build trust? Through acceptance, right? Right. Through meeting people where they are, you know? Because we're not all the same, and what good would that be anyway? Um, but if you can meet people where they are, and you can, then you can start to build the trust and build the relationships, rather than trying to expect that people will fit into some other expectation that you have of them. Yeah. I just, I think for me, the biggest uh, caveat was hearing him discuss how, you know he first got with Giada and he was like yeah. it's it's interesting to go come from this place of 
I think people doing preemptive relationship work, because Jackie said, mentioned this too, and that's what Alexi was talking about too, mm -hmm. is like, how do I make sure this is meaningful and right intentional intentional yeah. yeah and yeah. i like the idea of you know approaching a relationship with like let's find out you know the real stuff before we get into this to make sure it's right and yeah um gosh he's such a deep person alexi he's so deep sweet i also love it that as a kid he kind of manifested everything that came to him you know, and right. And I sometimes stop and think about that for my own life. Like, did I manifest this? Was it just good luck? But he was very specific and he was at the moment feeling a lot of emotion. So, you know, somewhere that squirreled its way into a subconscious. And then here he is. For me, it's the true sense of power. You, for the listeners, like you will find somebody who's truly powerful because they give their gifts away. You know, yeah. I think people who feel powerless are the ones out there that are trying to take power from you, that mm -hmm. are trying to build themselves up as some kind of, you know, false identity mm -hmm. based off of lies, manipulation, secrecy, mm, point. control. Those are all very powerless places to come from. Powerful people mm -hmm. are vulnerable, authentic, transparent. Um, yeah. You know, and 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 this guy has every reason given his circumstances to sure. be, you know, all of those he, things. He could just, and he could just step back and enjoy his life because he has the means to, to do that, you know, yeah. and he has yeah. a wonderful family to enjoy it with and everything. And he has plenty of um, maybe more than he realizes, right? Influence and whatever. But instead he decides I'm going to take whatever influence I have. He's very modest about it, yeah. but you know, he'll take whatever <laughs> influence he has to try to, you know, like in very gentle ways, push, push advertising and marketing into a more egalitarian direction or Without cutting off the hand that feeds him, you know, cause I know yeah, the, struggle. Right. the struggle is like, you know, you, you are feeding me, but you're only choosing Caucasian women, you know, there right. are other people that out there. Yeah. And um, yeah, I like that he does that too, but I also, that he mm -hmm. just, he's such a good person it's yeah. so nice to have good people on the planet, no matter what royal family you come from nothing right it's family just you come from yeah just be a good human being it just has a good spirit uh, can we discuss his books are all just and charity his poetry no, it's the, okay charity. first of all yeah like, i love that he said that he's like look i'm a photographer and that pays me well you know and so this stuff which he, he even wouldn't take credit for it kind of he's like it just kind of comes to me and then i just put it into a book and then i put the book out there and the money goes to charity i mean it's such a beautiful cycle that he's like able to participate in. And that he's so accessible in the mm -hmm. sense that we're talking about somebody who is shooting with major celebrities, royal family photographer, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. you know, has been to places that none of us can really even dream of or will ever touch in our lifetimes and is mm -hmm. willing to step down from Mount Olympus a bit to talk to regular folks, everyday yeah. folks. Well, thank you for That's joining great. us for the recap and introduction, of course, to Alexi Lubomirsky, The Power of Perception in our Elevating Narratives section of UnderOneSky.life. And we will keep going, moving onwards and upwards. As we always say, together, we're finding solutions. We're discussing how to build better communities. And we're just loving the heck out of you guys being with us and joining with us on this journey.